So today I'm going to talk to you about the different parts of the wig and how to select one for a show. Um, when you look at a wig, you are uh, looking at the inside of it like this, and you're going to see the wefting where it's stitched together. And then you can also see kind of the top or the crown of your head where like you would imagine the, the top of your scalp would be, um, would normally be here. And then in the back of the wig, there is usually elastic and a back piece that goes at the nape of your head. So this part is what stretches over your head and allows it to fit over your own hair. Um, sometimes there's these elastic little, this one has Velcro, so sometimes there's these little elastic adjustable straps and they have hooks or this one has Velcro um, that is so that you can tighten it on your actor. A lot of times since we really pin them on for a show, you don't really need to use those. So often we'll cut them out of a wig. Okay, so then when you're thinking about selecting a wig, there's several things you need to think about. The type of hair, um, the hairline, and how close you're gonna be on stage. So how close will the actor be on stage to the audience? Because you always wanna make sure it looks natural. And that's kind of hard with wigs. So human hair would probably probably look the most natural, but often the wigs that we have in our stock or the ones that are more uh, affordable are gonna be synthetic. So you have a um, couple choices on styles of wigs. So you have what's called a hard front, which means the hairline at the front of the face is hard. There's no um, hairs that are finely stitched into a lace, and I'll show you what that is in a minute, um, that makes it look more natural. This has a hard hairline, okay? So that's a hard front. And when you're choosing a hard front wig, you wanna make sure a lot of the time that the, um, the hair maybe is a little shorter in front, so you could make bangs that might cover it. Or when you're styling it, you can try to adjust the style so that it kind of covers that hard front. Then you have what's called a lace front. So lace front is usually made with what you can see here. It's this fine mesh lace, and the hair is individually knotted. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's knotted to the lace to hopefully give it a more natural hairline. And we do this, especially on like large stages, you can get away with the lace front. Sometimes it's hard on um, a more intimate stage to disguise the lace, but if you work really hard to make sure that it's the same color of the actor's um, face, um, their skin tone, then it makes it a little easier. And then you can see on the inside of this one, it is constructed differently. So it doesn't have those wefts that are elasticized. This one has um, the wefts stitched to the lace, creating the inside of it. So um, it's less stretchy which means that you would want to make sure it really fits the actor's head, especially with their hair in pink curls underneath. Okay, so when you are going to brush a wig, let's say you selected the wig that you want to choose, you want to use, and also in the selection process is hair color so and hair texture. You can see this wig has very straight hair um, texture and it could be curled and set so that it, it is wavy, but um, sometimes the wig fibers don't really want to be curled, so you kind of have to test it out and see if it'll work for you. Uh, this wig needs to be cleaned, but before it's cleaned, it also needs to be brushed. So what I've done is pinned it onto this wig block, okay? That's the best way to wash it, is to have it pinned onto a wig block. And you want to make sure the wig blocks are covered in plastic so they don't get ruined when you get them wet. And I put pins around around the edges of this hairline, and you can I, I have about four, but you might want to do a couple more just to make sure it's very secure. And this one is also a hard front, right? So I don't have to worry about the delicate lace. Usually, with the lace front, we have to pin them down separately in a different way so that it um, doesn't rip the lace when we wash it. So if I a wig when you want to brush it out you can brush some of it um, without it on a, a head a wig block but it helps um, to, 
to not pull the hair too much. So usually just like normal hair, um, like your own hair, you want to start at the bottom and then brush through it. And I want to brush this wig before I wash it so that I get all the tangles out. This one's pretty untangled, um, but a lot of times you might come across you might come across a wig that is really kind of ratty. And the best way to do this is to just go slowly. And I don't have the proper brush, but I do have a comb. Uh, you want to hold the hair and slowly work the ends. Okay, So you just work the knots all the way to the top where it gets to the root. And this wig is going to take a very long time because it's a very very knotted and it's not pinned on here properly either so um, I'm just kind of give, getting you the sense of how to brush it out you hold it with your hand very securely and work out the knots you never want to take a wig and just start brushing it especially if it has knots because you start ripping the hair fibers out so always hold the hair and kind of brush through it so when you want to wash a wig, after, after it's been worn, um, you need to wash it because it's usually got the actor's sweat and makeup in it. So I have this one on the headlock, and if it's a synthetic wig, you can use just dish soap. You can also use um, baking soda um, and let it soak in the baking soda and warm water so that it gets all of the um, gunk and makeup out. But um, if you just use dish soap and um, soak the wig in, a, a bucket, I have a bucket here full of hot water, or warm water. Um, you can kind of work the hair and you want to try to avoid getting it tangled. And this wig I have here is really actually kind of long. So what you can do is a very loose braid and that will kind of help keep the um, fibers from getting tangled. So just So I have this wig in a loose braid. If it's a shorter wig, you don't have to do that. So you can take either dish soap or you can just use shampoo. So I have um, just some cheap shampoo and I'm gonna dip the wig on the head in the bucket, okay? And I'll just get it totally wet. It's rotating the, the cap of the wig in the water to make sure it gets totally soaked. And then once it's wet, what I'll do is put some shampoo, I can put it in my hands. And you're just gonna do it like you would wash hair, right? You're gonna lather it up into the fibers of the wig. So I have, I have the soap. I got the shampoo on the wig and I'm just gonna kind of rub it through. And you can also hold this under the tap, but right now I'm trying to get the, um, the cap of the wig to get so I'm just kind of rubbing um, the shampoo down onto it and I'm going to just soak it in water and just kind of squish and squeeze out the shampoo so that it gets through all of the fibers. And, and you just do this um, until you think you've gotten all of the hair washed and then once it's washed I'll rinse it under the tap to get all the soap out. And then it can dry on on this wig block. Uh, you may want to take it off and squeeze it out with a towel. So you can get a big towel and roll it up in the towel and squeeze it out. And then you usually want to hang it to dry. So we have some little wig stands you can hang them on. And then you want to make sure they're totally dry before you brush them out.